Got the Carefree Deluxe running here. Got the uh, top off. There's no payload in there. Here's the burner. This is the foot pedal. Controller over here. He's got the set point is a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. The timer in there is set to an hour and a half. This turns it on hour and a half. This will cycle on and off. There's a thermal couple touching one of the uh, coils, and so that's critical. Okay, we've got the uh, Incinolet running here. Turn the lights on. This is the timer. Hour and a half. This initiates the timer to start. This is the set point, which is a thousand degrees F. It's also got degree C in there. Those are the stock settings. This, of course, is the uh, blower motor. This half moon shaped piece here, that's where the catalyst is in. And uh, it's like a catalytic converter, basically. And there's nothing, there's no payload in this right now. Just running this, testing it out. Here's the coil. We make them in 110 volt models, 208 and 240. This little light on here means that the actually there's power to the burner. And so this will cycle on and off. So that's going to go ahead and go from red to non glowing as it cycles on, depending on what the size of the load is. We've got the cover off. Got a special 12 gauge extension cord I made. Uh, with the uh, 20 volt, 20 amp connector on it. And this temperature here is fairly, I'd say it's about 100. Got the side cover off. Went through and cleaned out the uh, lot of debris on the blower wheel inside here. Blower wheels. Covers off right now for the uh, controller that goes on here. The way this works is uh, when you've done your business, it drops down inside there a wax paper piece. Uh, there's a set of uh, covers like this. This is upside down. This opens up, drops down in there. Of course, there's the traditional lid, and that's the incinerator right there. We've made these things for many years. This one, I had to adjust this. I had to lift up, uh, went one turn up so that the uh, clamp shell would completely close. It was a little bit hanging open a little bit, and so now that's clamp free. This has got kind of a mechanical scissors mechanism. So the way this works is the first time it's used, I mean for the cycle, you hit this button. And then it's going to go ahead and run, set the timer for on and for an hour and a half, 90 minutes. And the actual power to the burner on here is cycling on and off. It's kind of like your uh, oven. And so right there it just turned off. There's no red light. So this particular unit I believe is 1800 watts. I think more modern ones, are, I don't know if they say 2000 on the nine nameplate. I believe it's an 1800 watt burner. I think this unit's probably 20 years old. There's the 
pot down there, the ash pan. It's got a block here, and you empty that when it's half full. And inside this chamber on the outside wall, there's catalysts, and those look like, uh, let's see what we got here. Look like little beads. They look like this. Kind of like in a catalytic converter. That's just some of it I've taken out. And you can go through and undo. You can go through and take the uh, cover off here. Right here. You can undo these. Mine were pretty hard to take off, take that off, and then you can use a vacuum cleaner and suck out the beads and clean out all the gunk in them, and then you'll get a better action to pull through there. And it's low, you can order a pack of beads. I think there's three packs that fill this up. So I think it's about $100 worth of uh, catalytic converter beads that are in there. Now I just clicked on. So it's not drawing 1800 watts during the whole hour and a half cycle. This is kicks on, kicks off, kicks on, kicks off. So depending on how much gunk is in here, it's got to incinerate, it's going to go through there and kick on and off. So if you ask the question, is it uh, 1800 watts for an hour and a half, which would be uh, 2700 uh, watt hours would be 2.7 kilowatt hours. That's not correct because it, it depends on the duty cycle here. So if it was half, it would be 1.35 uh, cents uh, kilowatt hours. So it just kicked off again. So it's going to cycle on and off. Now, if this is used again, you hit the button again here, and what that does. It just punts and gives it an extra an hour, hour and a half. So if this was used for, say, 30 minutes and then somebody's got to do their business again in here, uh, you, you hit the button every single time, it's going to go half hour plus an hour and a half will run for two hours because it's got to have enough uh, cooking ability to go ahead and you know, burn up what's in there. And this is rated as an incinerator. So the air that comes out is bone. It's not even as hot as a hair dryer. It's pretty, really cool. So this uses a four inch duct. And if the catalytic converter is worn out or dirty in some, it needs to be cleaned out in there. And that's what absorbs any any foul orders or anything like that. This one's got a broken piece here on the side here. I think that just prevents you from the little shield that's on there. There's a lock nothing to do. Just keep going again. So you can hear it clicking on and off. Motor's replaceable, controller's replaceable, timer's replaceable. It's got a bunch of safeties on it. <coughs> there's a temperature switch here. I think there's two more on the side of the incinerator. And then down over here you've got There's a safety switch here. There's another type of, some type of uh, clicks on unit here and here. And then those are the connectors to the burner that's in there. Shouldn't be fooling around with this with the cover off, but I do that a lot. So the difference is, is the the difference between, let's say, the 120 and the 240 volt models, it's going to have a different coarse burner in it. And then you're going to have a different blower motor here. 
that's going to run on 110 volts versus 240 versus 110 or 208, which is like the network service or two legs off of three phase would be 208. And the 240 volt model runs the same amount of time, but it's going to probably heat up quicker. I think it's the same. It's going to heat. I think it's more watts, but it's going to go ahead and heat this up quicker. So it's got the same set point for the uh, thermocouple. So the total watt hours per cycle is going to have to be the same because it's got the same chamber. It's got the same set point, the same thermal characteristics. It's just going to go ahead and come up to speed quicker. So you can, uh, there it is off again. All this is made out of, uh, I just clicked on. See, this is non magnet doesn't want to stick to this. Sticks a little bit over here. So what that tells me is that this is probably 300 series stainless. It's not 400. Let me take a... It will sort of stick with a rare earth magnet to where you've got some cold forming, which means it's coal work. But They take this beefy rare earth magnet. They don't want to stick here. It tends to stick a little bit on the corners because this is formed. And so when it's formed, this has got a higher, uh, it's been coal work. So maybe if this was quarter hard stainless, it has a, barely an attraction to it. You go around here, it's got a little bit more because it's been formed around this corner. Same thing with the 300 series spring. Uh, if you anneal a 300 series spring, you won't be attracted to magnet. If you got a, say, a three fourths hard uh, 300 series spring, it will be attracted slightly, pretty fairly decent to a magnet. This has just got a slight attraction. Now let's go look in here again. Drop the camera in there, it could be all over. There's the pot. Here's the outhouse. off again. See the engineer in me wants to put a light on the side that'll blink on and off just to be cool. But I don't know. Sell us what we're gonna do with this playing out toy. That'd be easy to do is just hook two Christmas tree bulbs across the heater, stick a light, put them on here, and have a click on and off. Might, might not be UL approved though. Be in the controller here. Preset to 1000 degrees F for efficiency. Timer, relay, safety thermostat. It's got a whole bunch of safeties on this thing. Okay, I got the top on, but it's not bolted on, so 
action's gonna be a little bit goofy. Push this down here. It's like that. There's a paper liner, wax paper liner goes in there. This is the foot pedal. Drops it down. You gotta get that adjusted. Drops it down into the waste pot down in there. So you got the big jaws. So I have all the contents go down in there. And because it's not bolted down, it's like that. Come in different color lids. You know, you get it get bolt on the bottom. undo to get that off of there. Unscrew so all the timer and everything's underneath the bottom. There's four screws here. One, two, three, four. They kind of look like countersunk screws. And that touches the feature on the trap that grabs that. This is how they change the type of uh, lid that's on the bottom. This says model carefree. On the patent plate it says carefree deluxe. I think today they call this a CF or carefree. They make a marine version that uh, has a mounting plate in the bottom I think for shock this sits on and then there's also a uh, there's an older model called an RV I believe it's the same as this so this is the CF then I think there's a WV model and I think the other one's TC don't hold me to that that's the heater element down in there I opened that up and it just kicked on the light. So every time this is used, when I say used, somebody does their business. You're going to put this in here, and then you're going to hit the button again. And this is going to add 30 minutes more, or an hour and a half on top of the timer. Let's make sure everything's burned up. No, I'm going to run this and just make sure this turns off. We vacuumed a lot of junk out of here. Down here where the mower, blower is down here, the, on the incinerator down there, there's some holes to this uh, duct through here that can be vacuumed out to make sure you get good airflow through there. And again, I mentioned down in here the on the motor, the uh, squirrel cage can get some crap on it. 